What's up, guys? So um, I have always been an ancient history nerd, I'm obsessed with like the Egyptian pyramids. That was the original thing that threw me into my obsession with like ancient history. And um, I've been waiting for some new discovery um, to hit the mainstream for a while. Something that I've just felt like they're going to be releasing something, and I've said this before on my podcast, um, you know, they're going to release some sort of information that's going to shake everything up and start to change and shift the narrative. And I want to get your guys' opinion about this latest discovery on the pyramids. This is a um, video that just dropped on Substack. I want to know what you guys think. So uh, let me know in the comments down below. Corrado Malanga from the University of Pisa and Filippo Biondi involved in radar and remote sensing research with the University of Strathclyde published peer-reviewed research in 2022 via MDPI entitled Synthetic Aperture Radar Doppler Tomography Reveals Details of Undiscovered High-Resolution Internal Structure of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Their research was conducted using SAR data, Synthetic Aperture Radar along with proprietary software developed by Filippo Biondi that transforms the radar signals into phononic information, which allows for the detection of millimetric vibrations. This cutting-edge technology is capable of revealing underground structures invisible to traditional methods and revealed internal structures never seen before. Having established their expertise in using SAR to explore pyramid structures non-invasively, a recent press release on their current project was released last Saturday. This March 15th press release summarized the key findings. So what I think this is, is one of the wonders of the world was the, the labyrinth underneath the Giza plateau. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, there's, like a um one of the greatest historians in western culture um Herodotus he had a first hand there's a first hand account of these they they were like ac accessible back in his time still and it he described in fact I'm going to pull those I'm going to pull up his descriptions after this clip but basically the Egyptian government knows the labyrinth is underneath the pyramids in the whole plateau, but they've been hiding it from everyone because back in the day, like, I don't know if it was like the fifties or sixties or whatever, they had to create a dam for the Nile river and like a energy project, I think like a hydro energy or something, but either way they diverted um, and dammed up the, the river and whatever they did, caused the flooding of the whole underground system underneath the Giza plateau. It's all underwater. In the team's research of the second largest pyramid of the Giza plateau, known as the Khafre pyramid, and what they found was astonishing. The analysis of dozens of tomographic SAR images obtained from different angles enabled the 3D reconstruction of inside the Pyramid of Khafre and deep beneath the surface of Look the plateau. That. Near the base of the pyramid, five identical structures are seen, connected by geometric pathways. Inside that each of these wild. are five horizontal levels and a sloping roof. Below these five structures are eight cylindrical structures, which appear to be vertical wells, hollow inside, and surrounded by descending spiral pathways. These eight vertically aligned like cylindrical structures, arranged in two parallel rows from north to south, descend to a depth of 648 like meters, where they all merge into two large cubic structures, like measuring approximately 80 meters per side. The like, if you look at some of the, um, God, what's that guy's name? Randall, Car not Randall Carlson. In the same kind of sphere of people. But they they've done studies on the uh, 
there's that one guy that's like a chemical engineer or whatever that's looked at like the chemical makeup of like the granite stone and then the limestone casing stone and then the, the gold capstone that used to be on there and how it's like an insulator and then a conductor like the granite has got quartz in it and that's obviously a conductor um and so i think there was a lot more going on there and like nephilim technology this is pre-flood the entire structure extends approximately two kilometers beneath the surface and extends beneath all three pyramids of the Giza Plateau complex. Mainstream Egyptology tells us that the Giza pyramids were tombs for pharaohs Khufu, Khafre, and Menkure, yeah, right. and that they were built around 2500 yeah. BC using ramps, sledges, and levers. But the redundant mathematics in their construction, which include the pi, the cut? golden ratio, and the speed of light, along with the testimony of today's expert architects, suggests that the official story does not hold up. The massive underground structure revealed by the recent SAR data shows what appears to be a mechanical or functional system, and this has been hypothesized in the past. Nikola Tesla believed that the pyramids could harness Earth's natural frequencies. Yeah. This arguably inspired his experiments in wireless energy transmission and scalar yeah, waves. That might be what we're looking in at. In the Giza power plant, Christopher Dunn. I'm pulling up AI. This is um, Cloud AI. This is, uh, they have a new feature on now. It's, uh, they do web search. This is one of the best uh, AI systems, especially for writing code, that I've found. Uh, I'm not spelling that right. So I'm trying to find the um, first-hand account of the labyrinth by Herodotus. Okay, so he said, Herodotus described the Egyptian labyrinth as having two levels, one above ground and one underground. The upper level, which he personally witnessed, featured exits of the chambers and mazy passages hither and thither through the courts that were an unending marvel. The structures had a stone roof like the walls, and the walls are covered with cut figures, and every court is set around the pillars of white stone very precisely fitted together. While he described its location as being situated a little above the Lake of Morris, and nearly opposite to that which is called the City of Crocodiles. Herodotus was incredibly impressed by the structure, stating, This I have actually seen, and work beyond words. For it, if anyone put together the buildings of the Greeks in display of their labors, they would seem lesser in both effort and expense to this labyrinth. Regarding the specific layout, Herodotus wrote, when one had entered the sacred enclosure, one found a temple surrounded by columns, 40 to each side. This building had a roof made of a single stone, carved with panels and richly adorned with excellent paintings. He also described the complex passages. Uh, for the passages through the chambers and the goings this way and that way through the courts, which were admirably adorned, afforded endless matter for mar marvels as we went through from a court to a chamber beyond and from the chambers to colonnades and from the colonnades to other rooms and then from the chambers again to other courts herodotus mentioned that near the corner where the labyrinth ends stands a pyramid 240 feet high which great figures are cut a passage to this has been made underground while Herodotus was able to view the upper section, he noted that the Egyptian caretakers refused to show the underground chambers, explaining that they were the burial vaults of the kings who first built this labyrinth and of the sacred crocodiles. Hmm. Crocodiles. It's like a reptile, reptilian. I'm thinking dragon, Nephilim, fallen angels, forbidden knowledge, book of Enoch. That's where my mind goes. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Have a great one. Happy Friday.